Hi, I'm James from Gamefront, and welcome to Hot Off the Press Start, the weekly show that gathers together all the latest gaming news and delivers it quicker than Marcus Phoenix working his way through the locust horde after waking up in a particularly bad mood. Capcom has revealed that the upcoming new installment in the Resident Evil series will indeed be a spin-off featuring four-player co-op gameplay and will be heavily focused on team-based combat. We suspected that a team-based game may be in the works when screenshots of the game leaked online showing four different characters with a very much Left 4 Dead vibe. The official announcement included a new trailer for the game, which will be titled Project Resistance. Apart from the highlighted RE in the logo, there's no direct reference to Resident Evil, but it is part of that universe, and we're going to see the team of four fight hordes of zombies. We'll be sure to bring you any further details as we learn them. We reported the other week about a mod project to enhance the original Red Dead Redemption with updated graphics, shaders, and effects, including optimizing the game for smooth PC emulation. It seems now that, predictably, Take-Two has taken exception to the move and put a halt on further development. In an update posted on the mod's official page, the author, Damned Dev, confirmed that Take-Two had ordered the development to cease. Damned Dev also confirmed that an update video will be made to explain the situation soon, and that he was not very happy. Damned Dev is looking at legal options to be able to resume work on the mod, stating that he has a strong case. From experience, though, a similar mod from a few years back, which was going to bring the world of Red Dead Redemption into GTA 5, also fell afoul of Take-Two's lawyers, and development never resumed. A new update for Fallout 76 dropped this past week, and of course, that means more outrage from gamers who have taken exception to it. The update, in addition to adding a new nuclear winter map, and rewards has made some controversial additions to the Atomic Shop. Of course, the Atomic Shop has always seemed to be ground zero for these post-patch explosions of fury and rage, arguably with good cause. The source of the problem this time is a new refrigerator item, which lets people store food and drinks within it, slowing down the time it takes for them to spoil. Bethesda originally claimed the Atomic Shop would be only for cosmetic items within it, although that quickly went out the window when repair kits were added, giving players with cash a competitive edge. The fridge apparently is seen to do the same thing, giving players who are able to spend the extra $7 a way of being able to gain an edge over other players. Players have recently been suggesting on Edit that these items should be given via quest rewards instead. But of course, that's not going to make Bethesda very much money. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Life is Strange 2 was removed from sale on digital stores this past week in Australia, where several games have recently been falling foul of the nation's strict game classification system. The good news is that the removal is only expected to last for a few weeks. The developers of the game advised that the game will be delisted for two weeks starting this past Wednesday but reassured customers that anyone who already had the game downloaded will not lose out on being able to play the game. The reclassification process may be due to the upcoming DLC, as other games have had to go through in a similar process with the Australian Classification Board recently, including We Happy Few and Kingdom Come Deliverance. Remedy has officially unveiled their post-launch plans for Control, with two brand new paid expansions and a free DLC pack being on the roadmap. The two new DLC packs will be named Foundation and Awe, and we'll see Jesse's story within the oldest house continue after the main story. The free DLC coming this December will see a new game mode added that will allow players to explore even more new content within the oldest house and allow you to continue your investigations and expeditions. There's also gonna be a new photo mode coming in a future update, something the base game really needs given how amazing the environments in this game are. We're not yet sure of the release dates for these expansions, but both are due to be released before the mid of 2020. Gears 5's official launch this past week went relatively smoothly. Although the early access customers who got the game on September 5th 
faced several dramas with the game's multiplayer, such as server connections and matchmaking issues. To make up for these early access difficulties, the Coalition are going to be giving those affected five days of boost and 600 scrap. A nice little bonus, which the company says is a token of their appreciation. Despite plenty of testing, it's not entirely surprising to see a game like this face issues in its first few days. It could be argued that the early access may have actually been treated as a late beta test, an argument made by some who are feeling like they've been cheated out of enjoying their early access. Still. The bonus items are a nice gesture and hopefully go some way to help smooth over these small cracks. And finally this week, EA has confirmed that they will soon be recruiting testers for their new Project Atlas cloud gaming service with registrations now open on the EA website. EA states that the new service will use cloud-based technology to make deeper and more personalized games that will eventually create a world full of user-generated content, blurring the lines between the discrete domains of game engines and game services. The trial will apparently feature four games at launch, FIFA 19, Titanfall 2, Need for Speed Rivals, and Unravel. The company also commented that they are keen to be where the players are, and that cloud gaming is an inevitability that we won't be able to avoid. And that's this week's gaming news. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay up to date with all the latest gaming news from Gamefront.